Hello, everybody, and welcome to Uncle Todd for Christ. Thank you for joining me on this Hallelujah Friday, February 23rd, 2024. It is 3 11 p.m. Eastern Time as I'm speaking and recording. Praying your guys' day has been amazing, your week's been amazing, whatever, whatever time, date. Just praying you're making the day what you want it with everything that's in you. Again, I continue to praise God for every single one of you, and I thank every single one of you for joining as we continue to do these devotionals, grow together. And just continue to glorify God. Amen. Today's title, No Lack. No Lack. Pretty, I'm pretty sure where these this was going to head, and it, and it is. And not only is it today's scriptures for our devotional, it is also the scripture on today's calendar. I don't know if it's because it's February 23rd, but yes, Psalm 23. Um, so Psalm 23, it's, I think it's six verses long, folks. Just read the whole thing. We're very familiar with it. Why? Because we hear it at funerals all the time. I do not know, and even last year's devotional, Psalm 23 came up a lot. I don't know why we use Psalm 23 for funerals. It, it's a it's a psalm for right now. It's a psalm for right now, not once we've already gone to be with the Lord. I'm not taking away for people to love that. It's you know what I mean? But that's that's where we hear it the majority of the time is at funerals. But guys, please take time. Take Psalm 23 and just read it slowly. Read it very, very slowly in the now. In the now. Don't visualize a funeral home. Don't visualize a casket and flowers. Visualize this. Visualize Jesus, the good shepherd, and us, part of his flock, following him, the things he's promised us. And uh, you know what? I'm, let me read today's calendar. Um, and it's uh, Psalm 23, 2 is the verse they used. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. And this is from Max Lucado or Lucado, great author. Um, this is what he writes. Note the two pronouns preceding the two verbs. He makes me. He leads me. Who is in charge? The shepherd. The shepherd selects the trail and prepares the pasture. The sheep's job, our job, is to watch the shepherd. Guys, that's just so short, sweet, and beautiful, and powerful. An excellent reminder. We need those. We need those spiritual wake-ups. Um, Psalm 23, 1 through 3 in the Amplified Classic is our lead-off today. Writes this, or this is how it's worded in that version. The Lord is my shepherd to feed, guide, and shield me. I shall not lack. He makes me lie down in fresh, tender, green pastures. He leads me beside the still and restful waters. He refreshes and restores my life, myself. Amen. Uh, today's devotional is from Hannah Whittall Smith. She writes this. We're satisfied with what we have until the next new shiny thing comes out. And is dangled before our eyes. Guys, if you're tied to this world, you can't wait for the newest, latest, and greatest model. Whether it be shoes, car, home, furniture, clothes, food, jewelry. Guys, if you're trying to keep up with the Joneses or outdo the Joneses, as they say, you are so tied to this world and out of separation from God. Psalm 23, if Jesus is my shepherd, I don't need nothing. And that's Todd's paraphrase. That's Todd's translation. Jesus is my shepherd, my Lord. He's guiding me and leading me, protecting me. Got all I need. Thank you, Lord. Um, then we're suddenly unsettled, unable to rest until we have it in our hands, only to have it too soon lose its luster and be placed in a closet, junk drawer, storage unit, or thrift shop. And I'm going to add in there or at next year's yard sale. Been there, guys, and I'm just as guilty of it. Latest and greatest health equipment. You see treadmills, exercise bikes. You see all this stuff sitting out at yard sales. You see stuff, people go buy stuff at a yard sale, and then they sell it at next year's yard sale at their own. Guys, this is so true. We think that stuff, because it's awesome, is going to satisfy us. It's going to give us happiness. It, it doesn't, guys. That's temporary worldly happiness. That is not the true joy and peace that comes from Jesus. Um. I, another thing, what that reminds me of, you know, if you've ever bought anything, uh, the latest and great, look, look at, let's look at cell phones. I don't know what number, digit, letter, 5G, key, X, I, guys, whatever these phones are called nowadays, you can go out and buy the latest and greatest model, which is probably around 800 bucks now, I guess. Got 27 cameras on the backs of it. 
five million pixel guys i don't know what that stuff means it means nothing to me you go out and buy that phone guess what tomorrow that was obsolete now here's this model same with computers technology and all this think about that obsolete everything we buy here worldly sooner or later it's outdated and it's obsolete yes yeah, some clothing lines come back around and they're hip for a while but then guess what they lose their luster they're obsolete there's one thing let me do this there's only one one thing that does not lose its luster, its appeal, and its value, and that is our Lord. Amen. Break the chain of want. Realize that God has everything you need. He has already given us every spiritual blessing. With him to feed God and shield you, you will never lack, and you will find peace in mind, heart, and hand. Who is it that is your shepherd? The Lord! Exclamation point. Oh, my friends, what a wonderful announcement. The Lord God of heaven and earth, the almighty creator of all things, he who holds the universe in his hand as though it were a very little thing, he is your shepherd and has charged himself with the care and keeping of you as a shepherd is charged with the care and keeping of his sheep. If your hearts could really take in this thought, guys, and this is, this is, I read this sentence at the end, I skimmed, skimmed ahead and I read this and we're going to dwell on this. Let this one sink in and just run this through your head tonight or today, whenever you, you hear this. If, and I'm going to make this poor eyes, us, if our hearts could really take in this thought about how much God loves us and watches over us and takes care of us, if our hearts could really take that in, we would never have a fear or a care again. If that truly sank in, guys, if it sank in here and here where it matters, we would never have a care. We, we wouldn't. If it sank in, we never would have a fear or care again. For with such a shepherd, how could it be possible for you ever to want any good thing? Amen. Thank you, Hannah. Guys, this is just another reminder, another wake up call. What are you worried about? Why do, Why are you crying about this and that and worldly things that are so temporary? Don't ever, ever lose, lose grasp of the fact and the truth of who your shepherd is. Let me this camera. This, their shepherd. And guys, you think of a shepherd, and we could go back and get all theological about it. A shepherd back then was like basically one of the lowliest forms of occupation i mean they slept with the sheep they ate with the sheep they smelled like the sheep but look at the the angels they came to the shepherds and announced to them about the birth of jesus so there's a lot to be said in the bible about a shepherd and look at these sheep this perfect background man they're just following that shepherd and the shepherd does, does so much more than just make sure the sheep are fed he tends to them. He keeps his eye out for them, constantly watches over them, chases off any harm and danger, makes sure there's no danger of head. Guys, just let all this, please let all this sink in. Take Psalm 23 again. Read it slowly. Let the Holy Spirit point out something to you. Let him give you one of those aha moments. Read it in quiet. Make sure it's quiet. Take, yeah, guys, I cannot encourage you enough. When you're getting alone with God and you're reading scriptures and you're praying, Turn off all these obsolete electronics, guys. Those, to me, is it such an insult to my Lord and Savior, our Lord and Savior, guys, when we can't make sure it's going to be quiet. If, if, if we're watching these videos and we're struggling with things in life and we can't make it quiet to be alone with the Father, folks, man, I, I, I don't know any other way to say it is then your problem ain't that bad. If you cannot... If you cannot turn your phone off, take the phone off the hook, shut the TV off, put the dog outside. So it's not, you know what I mean, folks? This is stuff we got to do. Our shepherd loves us and cares for us so much. I remember a video last year about, you know, that God is watching. And a lot of times you say to somebody, God's watching you. You're either going to you're either going to feel conviction or condemnation or you're going to feel absolute security and, and confidence and peace. Guys, we need to be at a place right now that when we know God is watching us, man, that should just be an absolutely amazing, beautiful, peaceful feeling, knowing that my daddy, and this is me speaking personally, this is how we should all speak, knowing that my daddy is constantly watching me, constantly keeping an eye on me, constantly protecting me. I know my daddy is at my left hand. He's I'm not that far out of his reach. 
he guys, this is stuff we got to understand and realize and walk in absolute confidence of that because it's God's word. So thank you for joining me. Please, 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 please force it to be quiet. Read that Psalm 23. Read a couple of times. I, I just read it like three times before I started recording this video in a, a few different translations. But guys, it speaks. It does not have to be saved for funerals. God watches over us right now. Once we're gone, once we leave his temporary life and we're with him in heaven forever, he doesn't need to keep an eye on us no more, okay? He knows his children are home. But until, until we get home while we're in this temporary passing through life, this temporary earth world, whatever you want to call it, he's going to constantly keep an eye on his children, his loved ones, his flock. That's, all. That's pretty awesome, guys. So thank you for joining me. And until tomorrow, Saturday the 24th, enjoy the rest of your day. And we will see what the Lord says in. I love you guys.